Hello everyone, I am Buck WSR Weezer putting the do into do-it-yourself and our do-it-yourself project is this Whirlpool refrigerator freezer. I could tell you the exact model number but I certainly don't have it memorized. I'll put it in the description but there's a lot of uh, refrigerator freezers that are like this even if they're not made by Whirlpool. This is the kind with the side-by-side -side fridge on the top and the freezer drawer at the bottom. And what we're going to do today is replace the evaporator fan motor in terms of fan that's located inside the freezer compartment. I've already verified that our fan is not working by applying 12 volts directly to it and I'll show you that in a little bit. But we're going to change out that fan. We realized that it wasn't working. We would open the drawer and uh, press the, uh, the door switch button to simulate a closed door position and that fan in the back which you probably can't see right now but I'll show it to you presently was not working and some of the symptoms that we experienced was a, a freezer was inefficient cooling the freezer was not cold enough the ice cream was mush and if there's one thing I insist on in life it's firm ice cream sometimes the fridge would be too cold and the food inside it would be frozen not good for lettuce and other vegetables or sometimes it wouldn't be cold enough we also had inefficient ice production from the ice maker. So we verified that that evaporator fan is not working. Another symptom that I'll show you is we would have outrageous ice and frost buildup on the top of the evaporator. Now that's located in the back of the freezer. I'm going to take the cover off and show you that because we have to take that cover off to access the fan motor. But the bottom of the evaporator would be uh, clean. So the defroster heater at the bottom there was working, but there would be so much ice buildup up at the top of the evaporator and even above it. And we'd just get huge, huge ice buildup in there, almost to the point where you couldn't open or close the door. So we're going to replace that motor. And uh, here's what you'll need to do this job. A quarter inch nut driver or in my case the uh, drill with the quarter inch driver, nut driver bit, uh, a flathead screwdriver. You'll need the new fan motor which comes with the whole wiring hardness and all optionally I've got this 12 volt battery that I use to verify that our fan was not working because these these fan motors are a 12 volt motor. All right, so I'm going to walk you through the process. The first thing you want to do is power down your machine and also unplug it. So press and hold these two buttons. Okay, the cooling is off. It's hard to reach around and unplug it with a camera in my hand, but we can do that too. And I'll walk you through these steps here. So first we're going to open the freezer. All of our work is going to be done here, down here low. Uh, Risk uh, this basket will pop out. We'll set that aside. And this is how I do it. I'm going to unbolt the door. And there's four quarter inch screws. One, two, and then same on the other side. And I'll just move this door right out of the way. Pause it. It's not that exciting. These screws don't have to come all the way off. You just have to loosen them and then the door will lift off. Two on that side. Two on this side. Door lifts. We move it out of the way. Okay, so this is going to stay in place and it won't really, we'll have to move it in and out, but it won't be too terribly much in the way. Next comes out this basket. Now, I already told you that I diagnosed this motor as not being good. So, I, I put it back in just so that I could show you how to get access to it. Now, on this basket, you can, there's little clips that I didn't re-clip it. You stick your screwdriver in there, or in here, and it lifts up. You do that on the other side here too. It'll lift up 
and you'll be able to pull the basket out. Or you should. Oh, I forgot one other thing I wanted to show you. I can't actually do that yet. There's two screws in here, quarter inch, that have to come out. I should have showed you that first. There's one. And that comes out. Now we'll be able to pull this basket out of here by lifting up. What did you lift up? We removed those screws, which allows this to slide up. Okay. And the basket comes out from under that tray. Yeah, now, I, now I have access to the back of the freezer. And we want to take off a couple of things. There's a cover here that used to cover this fan. I removed it because the tabs had broken off. One of the times we had so much ice build up and I was out in here taking things apart and it broke, so we never put that back. But you probably have a white plastic cover that goes on here and that pops off. There's also a white plastic cover here over this thermistor. And you gotta pop that off as well. And then you can remove that cover, you just have this thermistor hanging right there. Next we're going to take off this plate in the back with four quarter inch screws. You can use the nut, quarter inch nut driver. I like to use the drill. One there. This is one of those jobs that the next day after you do it, you have a sore back. Remind me if I have a sore back tomorrow, why? Okay. You end up twisting your body in ways that you're not accustomed to doing. So those four screws come out and then you can Carefully pull this out. It may have sharp edges. Now it's been about two or three days since I defrosted this last manual. I told you we had huge ice buildups in there. And right now, what you do see when you look at that evaporator, it's thawed at the bottom, nice and clean, but like halfway up, you're starting to get it all frosted over. And then up here, even above it, where your therm thermostat is for the defrost heater, that gets all frosted over too, filled with ice. And uh, it's not too bad now because like I said, it was just been three days ago that we defrost it. And the problem is this fan is not working, this motor shot. Now I have already taken it out previously, as I told you, and I had cut the wires because I wanted to test it. Yours won't be cut. You'll have a red and a white wire. I've got wire nuts here on my red and white. They were fed there. So you're not gonna have cut wires and you're not gonna have to cut any wires to do this job. I only did so because I wanted to verify for myself the fact that that fan was not working. Now to bring the fan motor and all that wire assembly down, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna unplug this wire connector Wait a at the top. Okay. Squeeze the tabs and pull it down. You're gonna unplug the... Uh, There's one on the left also? You're gonna unplug on the left side and on the right side, the two connectors that, that supply power to your, your uh, defrost heater that runs across the bottom. I failed to get my glasses, so I have to get them. Oh, hang on. Oh, they're right down. I got them. <clears throat> There's a little tab on the connector that you might have to press to separate them. And again, okay, it's not so hard except for the fact that again. you're... There's a little tab here that you might have to depress to separate this connector. And it's a little hard only because the, it's awkward to get to it. Get it? <laughs> also, you've got these fins here that are sharp, you wanna to try to avoid them. You don't wanna bend them up either. Okay, 
so that's separated. While we're on this side, there's a ground wire that clips here onto the frame. Got to take that off too. Is it white plastic? It's a ground, a green ground wire, ah, and it clips onto a metal part here. I, I might need to get a pair of pliers. I can't get it with my bare hands. In which case we'll have to pause and go get them. Also on this side, again, the other clip for the, I gotta break off some of this built up ice. And this has been our problem. That ice just keeps growing and accumulating. That fan not working. The, the defrost is inefficient. And we get this huge ice buildup. Fortunately, it's only been three days, so it's not so bad. All right. I just got to unclip this side, too. All right. You did it. While we're on this side, we're going to uh, move our ice chunks out of the way. Up on this copper line is a clip-on thermostat that controls that defroster. So that just unclips from off, to, off of this pipe by breaking off some of this ice. All right, so now I got to get my pliers to grab that ground clip because I can't get it with my bare hands. After I do that, I got one, two quarter inch screws that have to come out. Where? Where are they? I missed it. On both sides of the heater, I mean the fan assembly. And once you do that, the fan assembly will come right out. There's one. Oh. There's two. Where are the other ones? And now this will lift right out. Mm -hmm. One screw went through here. A minute. Okay. The other through here. And it's fully freed up now, except for that ground wire. And okay. we'll have to pause and I'll go get the pliers. Are we back? Yeah, we are. All right, so the whole assembly comes out. So when you get a new fan motor, you get the whole wiring harness, which includes the thermometer, I mean a thermostat for your defrost heater, your plug, all the wires. So that's part of the new assembly, all that's included there. Not the fan. Not the fan blade, so we're going to take that off. Not this housing, so we've got to reuse the housing and the fan blade. So here's what we'll do. We pull this off. Like so, turn it upside down, and there's some, this uh, retaining bracket unclips on both sides. Comes out, we will reuse that. Now our motor pops out. Then there's this uh, rubber connector on both sides of it that we're also going to reuse. So here's our motor. Now in your case, your motor will still be connected to the wire. Like I said, I only cut these previously because I wanted to verify that the motor was in fact bad. So let me show you that. I've got a 12 volt battery here. And in as much as this is a 12 volt motor, this will be the ultimate test to see if it's really bad. And of course, it doesn't work at all. Will the new one work? Will the new one work? Well, it's going to be a little hard for me to test it because I don't wish to cut these wires. Oh, okay. So we're going to take it by faith that it's still good. Yeah, I could, I could figure out some uh, way to connect to the different terminals in here for the red and the white, but it's not necessary. We're just going to feel confident hey. they gave us a good item. Right. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Take that rubber piece that serves on both sides uh, and put it on both sides of the <laughs> new motor. The dog's in the way. Blue, beat it. Come on, come. Okay. 
What do we do? This black rubber thing okay, goes that onto on. the new motor. Now we're going to undo the wiring harness from the old. <clears throat> going to un undo the wiring harness. Can I see that? Just little nubbies. <clears throat> They don't want to cooperate. You can always clip them off because you're like not you reusing this harness. You're not reusing this harness. Okay, that one came out. And then again on this side, we're not reusing the wiring harness, but we are reusing the housing. All right. Good. All right. So let's put our motor in. How does he go? It's like this. It's there. And it's held in place with this guy. It snaps in place. Can I see it? Can I see the snap in place piece? That's it. Thank you. You just press it in and. You can get some fun of the camera. <clears throat> Good. And this gets just pressed back into place. Okay, now we're going to connect our harness around like it had been before. All right, so that runs around the back. So then it's going to go up in place like this. This will go to the right side where this clips onto our copper line. So I think I'm ready to take our two screws, one, two, and get it back up in place. Great. Piece of insulation came out. Put him back. Next, we'll make our wire connections. What's the first one? I'm going to start with the ceiling. wiring harness okay. if I can. Can it only go in one way? Only goes in one way, so you won't screw that up. Next, our ground clip. You see that clip? Yep. Goes right here on the metal. Yep. Next we connect our defrost heater. What do you have on the other side? Oh, there we go. On the other side we have our clip-on thermostat. That gets echo to the roof? It clips onto the copper See pipe it. right there. Really? And this clips into the other end of the defrost heater. Okay, we've made all our connections. So you don't have to cut or sh you cut strip any wires. It's the whole thing comes with everything you need to just plug and play. Oh, you might need a chiropractor when you're done. Yeah, that's true too, but I won't need a repair guy. True. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Sprawled out. <laughs> all right, so that's in. I can put the the uh, cover back on. Are you gonna wait? But I sure would like to turn it on and see if it'll run. Okay. Because that's the ultimate test. And you're turning it on up here. So if you unplug your fr fridge, you plug it back in, and then put the cooling, initiate the cooling. Let me do that. Sure. All right. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, which is. Those These two, two on the buttons right. on the far right, you have to hold it. I hear it. Now you're cooling. Well, that's what we got going on down here. 
It's not running yet. And you're pushing the light in? Yeah. Hey everybody, so here I am behind the fridge. We installed the new evaporator fan motor and I was about to say thanks for watching and have a good day and suddenly I realized it wasn't working. But what, what is going on here? Did I buy a defective part? I said, how could that possibly be? Well, off camera I applied 12 volts from a battery to the 12 volt motor and it, it ran just fine. So the problem was a, clearly uh, I mean, we, we verified that the previous fan motor was toast, but the new one didn't help even though it was in good shape and uh, realized there must be some other problem. So I want to show you what I found. Here I am at the back of the fridge, took the cover off the control panel and uh, looks pretty intimidating. But with the help of, uh, and I'll put a shout out to Rick, at the appliance put a link in the description had a conversation in a forum with Rick it was so helpful he talked me through how to test for the 12 volts at the different locations back here at the control board and also how to check for continuity between the control board and the fan motor inside the freezer the evaporator fan motor and I realized it did not have continuity. It was not getting 12 volts to the motor. And I want to show you now exactly what I found on this wire that provides 12 volts for that motor. There's an inline resistor. And I realized as I was looking around at these wires that the, that the insulation on this resistor was uh, kind of burnt, kind of melted and flaky. I began to peel it back and as you can see that resistor is completely charred toast. That's good news then because at least now we have a clear diagnosis of why I was not getting 12 volts to the evaporator fan motor. So I've ordered a resistor. Uh, from what Rick tells me, this is a quarter watt, 10 ohm, plus or minus 5% tolerance resistor. So I ordered some of those. They should be arriving today. I'm not real good at soldering, but we're going to try to solder a new resistor back into this line. And then we'll be good to go. So, just waiting for the delivery. And we'll get right back at it. Close up of that burnt resistor. So I taped the uh, piece of metal to the back of the fridge just to serve as a heat shield. I don't have a lot of soldering experience, so I'm kind of I'm making it up as I go, but I think we probably got it right here. Got some at both ends. I'll put a little bit more on. a little bit long. So I'm going to trim them off. Okay. Well, happily, here we are taking a look at the fan actually running and spinning. The evaporator fan motor is now working, so now we should be able to get some efficient cooling as it will pull the air over these evaporator coils. 
and distribute it throughout the uh, refrigerator. So I'm going to put the rest of the uh, freezer components back together and uh, hopefully within 24 hours, maybe less, this thing will be uh, back at the temperature where it should be.